Hello Uggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Wolf, N2SJO. Now this was sent some time ago, got caught in an email backup, but I apologize. His question is very interesting. Dave, with my digital multimeter, or DMM, I can measure capacitors, it works fine. I tried to find out whether a vacuum capacitor has 15 picofarad or not. The DMM shows nothing. Can I use a DMM or any other measuring instrument? Thanks in advance for a short answer to the email. The short answer is yes. Why don't we take this as a jumping off point to go into something that's important to all hams, and that is making measurements. We talk about in the books and in articles and QST and on the air and stuff like that about resistors having, oh, they may want a 100 ohm resistor. They may want a 26 microfarad capacitor and so on. So one of the nice things to be sure that you've got the right part is to actually measure the value. And to measure the value takes us into the area of test equipment for ham radio. Back in ancient times when everything was analog, meter was very common. And it measured three things, volts, ohms, and milliamps, not full amps, milliamps, okay? And that's what this one does here. It'll go either AC voltage or DC voltage. It will test a battery and it will look at a small number of milliamps, in this case up to 250. Okay, so these were called VOMs for the thing they could measure, or volt, ohms, milliamps. And this was an essential piece of gear in every ham's shack. You can pick these up for two or three bucks if you go to the right place, and you get what you pay for, okay? One of the problems is interpreting the scale on here, because the scale is not linear, okay? And it can really mess you up. So let's take a look at a more modern multimeter. So this little thing is famous for being available at Harbor Freight for a very small amount of money, less than $10. This does not measure AC voltages with true RMS, but it does a lot more than this thing right here. Plus, it is digital. Now, that means it's going to require a battery, as does that one. This is a typical multimeter. Now, notice the off-on. There is a battery in there, and if you leave it in the on position, it will quite happily run the battery down. Now, these are usually 9-volt batteries. Sometimes there are a couple 1.5-volt double A's. But let's look at what you can measure around here, starting here. DC volts. Now, you have to set the range. And the way you do this is you set at the highest range and then you keep working your way down. Or if you know you're going to test a 12 volt system, you measure it there. There's two volts. There's two tenths of a volt. Okay, you work your way down clockwise. Now, here's for ohms. 2,000 kilo ohms is 2 mega ohms is the max it can do. This, a lot of old tube stuff uses uh, resistors of even higher resistance. 200K, 20K, 2,200. Okay, so you can pick any one of these and check for resistance. If you've got a 1 over here, that means it's not measuring anything. Let's plug in the leads. This is the common down here. It should be black, shouldn't it? And we're going to measure a short circuit here. See, it says 0 ohms. But then when we've got a 1 over here, that means it's out of range. Now, in addition to that, it'll measure AC voltages. Okay. Also, it can measure, see, it says uh, uh, battery. That's actually a symbol for a battery, one line's longer than the other. Okay. Now here's your DC amps from 200 microamps all the way up to 200 milliamps. Now this thing has a special feature. If you push this into here, it will actually measure up to 5 amps. 
Okay, normally we'd have it down here. Okay, it will also measure a certain parameter of transistors. And here's a little socket right here that you can put either PNP or NPN transistors in there. So it's not so good for FETs, but it's good for a bipolar transistor. I never use those. And this one right here is a diode test when you put it on here and the diode conducts the resistance through the diode and uh, you can tell if a diode's good or bad, okay? This is a normal type of a meter. Now, it will not measure true RMS of AC voltages. And some people say that's a terrible handicap. It isn't. You have to spend 50 bucks or more to get a meter that measures true RMS. I'm trying to remember the last time I had to measure true RMS. I think what I did was put it on the oscilloscope because that'll read it right out for you and you can see what's going on with the waveform. Don't worry about it not reading true RMS. This will do for most ham radio use. Now I want to show you another type of meter. This right here is a Chinese meter. It's a multimeter. Okay. And you again choose your options here. Now you've got to remember that there's a battery in here, a couple batteries in here. And you now this comes out so it can sit up like this. It's also got magnets on the back so you can stick it on a steel cabinet or something. You can go up to 10 amps here. You can actually measure capacitance. Okay. Now the problem with measuring capacitance is when you put the leads in here, and this is the normal way you do it, at least this has the black mark black, okay, then it's hard to hold a capacitor between these two leads because if you hold the capacitor down, your body has a fair amount of capacitance. This thing will also measure temperature, that's pretty nice. And this meter's not too much money. Uh, you can get this on Amazon for, I believe, less than $50, much less than $50. And it will measure capacitance. Its bottom range is 60 nanofarads. That means max scale 60 nanofarads with a resolution of 0.01 nanofarads. Okay. Now, this doesn't go into the picofarad range. Now, for that, you really need uh, a purpose-built tool. This is the UNI-T UT611 handheld. It says LCR. That's inductance, capacitance, and resistance. Okay. Now, this thing has an odd connector right here. This thing plugs into all four holes in this thing because this has standard leads too if you want to use them but this thing plugs in here and what you've got are things you can slip things in and it will measure it let's put the thing on here and see what we've got now this is the smallest capacitor i have and if you look closely at it here you see that it's made of uh, just two pieces of wire twisted together this is often called a gimmick capacitor because if you need an extremely small amount of capacitance, this will do it for you. Okay, this is less than one picofarad. This is the gimmick capacitor, which is just wrapping two wires together. Occasionally, you see these in very old radios. Okay, because it's just a little itty-bitty tiny bit of capacitance, less than a picofarad. This is the smallest capacitor I can make. Now... Our question asker, Wolf, wanted to know how to measure 15 picofarad. Okay, this right here is a 10 picofarad capacitor. This capacitor is 9 nanofarads, which is 9,000 picofarads. And that gimmick capacitor that we put in there measured... 2 picofarads, this is 9 nanofarads again. There's an unmarked capacitor, 0.572 nanofarads. Okay, so it's 573 picofarads. 
and I think this is one of the high voltage ones. Let's. I've got this bag here where I just bought a bunch of capacitors of various values. Okay, now this is zero. 0.014 nanofarads, which is 14 picofarads. So this is exactly what you're trying to get to. It's 0.014. Now, this has... The way that it measures these is that it puts them in a circuit of different frequencies and it measures the reactance and the reactance is a measure of what we're looking for. We have frequency of 10 kilohertz, 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 1 kilohertz, and 10 kilohertz. I'd go for the highest frequency. Get a little closer to radio frequencies and then we'll put this one in here. And it comes with, with 14.7 picofarads. Okay, this is a lot better than the other one. We've got a 10 kilohertz here that we're using as our basic measuring frequency. It's 14.7 picofarads, which is almost exactly what you were looking for in terms of a vacuum variable capacitor. Now, the reason for vacuum variable capacitors is that you can put a pretty high voltage across the two sides, and there's no air in it to conduct an arc. I mean, it can still arc, but it's less prone to do that, okay? So, we've got lots of things here that you can take a look at, lots of buttons and so on. But the point is that this capacitor right here is uh, 15 picofarads. Let me try some of these others. Again, I'm using the highest frequency that I've got. And this is 9.6 picofarads. Okay, so measure at the highest frequency you've got. Pick it up over here, 9.6 picofarads. And the book will tell you what it thinks its accuracy is, but I'd go plus or minus 10% on capacitors. Okay, what we've shown is that a purpose-built handheld uh, inductance, capacitance, and resistance meter can measure down to 10 picofarads. So it should be able to measure something from your vacuum variable capacitor. Now I will warn you that, see how this is right here so that you can just slip the thing right in here? If instead you put the leads in here and try and touch them on the capacitor, your chances of getting an accurate measurement are much less because just putting your hand around one of these wires can change the capacitance of the circuit, okay? Hence this little thing right here. So you can actually stick components in there. Now, in terms of measurements, in a lot of old books, they'll talk about microfarads, which is done with a U, and then micro microfarads, which is a millionth of a microfarad, which is what picofarads are. We use today picofarads, nanofarads, which is 1,000 times that, microfarads, which is 1,000 times that, and then there are millifarads. Now, in the old books, they will, instead of UUF, they will put MMF, meaning micro-microfarads. So be aware, looking for things like that. What, what we have learned, and this is good for the new ham, is that it's often very good to check components before you use them in circuits. You can check resistors to see if they're actually the resistance they say they are, which I always do. And unless you've memorized the resistor color code, it's very hard to determine what a resistor's value is because there are 10 different colors. And the average male knows about four colors. You know, talk to my wife, she's an artist, she can list off thousands of colors, but 
is sometimes hard to tell these things apart. So I make it a practice that whenever I'm building a kit, I actually measure the component that I'm putting in to see what it will do. Now this little instrument right here, uh, which I'm falling in love with rapidly, is used to measure things that the traditional old voltmeters don't measure and measure them fairly accurately. See, this is measuring down to less than a picofarad, whereas the scale on this Venlab here, the lowest scale for capacitors, is 60 nanofarads. So one picofarad would probably not even budge the needle, nor would a 15 picofarad load check each instrument to see what its sensitivity is. You may need something that's actually specifically prepared for that to get what you want. What instrument would I recommend to a new ham? Go down to Harbor Freight or order this online. This is less than $10. And you can do most of your measurements like how much voltage your power supply is putting out, little things like that. That's usually that. Or measure the value of a resistance before putting it into the circuit and you'll find it quite handy. Troubleshooting if you're like looking to see if your DC cable is actually carrying current from one place to another. Now when you get to measuring capacitors and inductors that's a step up okay and you can certainly do that and something like this one right here which is the UNI-T model UT611 is one that works very well. It's going to cost you a little money. That's because it'll measure down below a picofarad, okay? So what I'm thinking with your DMM is that it may not be sensitive enough to detect 15 picofarads represented by the vacuum capacitor. So there you have it. Until the next time we meet, please be sure that you're a subscriber and it doesn't hurt anything to be a subscriber. If you would also like to get notified of new videos, then you can click the bell and that will notify you if you've told YouTube that overall notifications are okay. If you'd like to help support this channel, go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Thank you, all of you, for making this channel possible. And until next time, 73.